Welcome, and may we please have your attention for a few moments. The University of Calgary, located in the heart of southern Alberta, both acknowledges and pays tribute to the traditional territories of the peoples of Treaty 7, which include the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprised of the Siksika, the Bigani, and the Gaina First Nations, the Sutina First Nation, and the Stony Nakoda, including Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Good Stony First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Districts 5 and 6. Please take a moment to turn off your mobile phone. Photography and videography are not permitted for the duration of the performance. In the event of an emergency, proceed to the nearest exit and make your way to the designated muster point, as directed by a staff member. If you require assistance, please let a staff member know. Thank you, and enjoy the performance. Uh, good afternoon and welcome. My name is Ori Radford. I'm a professor in the music division of the School of Creative and Performing Arts here at the University of Calgary. Uh, you're here, you're, what you're going to hear this afternoon is the fruits of a wonderful, wonderful relationship in Calgary between the Lands End Ensemble and the music division and our students in composition. So this is uh, about the fourth or fifth time that this has taken place. Uh, young composers, you know, they, they learn techniques, uh, they compose etudes. Some of these are played by their fellow students. Uh, hearing their music live is the most important feedback and learning tool. Here, they get the opportunity to work with professional musicians. So this is a, a kind of a long process. This, this began last September, where the students began writing piano trios in several classes. And then in January, with the first draft, of their pieces complete. The Land's End Ensemble visited us, visit us on this stage and they read through these composi new compositions by four of our students, giving feedback, working, talking about technique, talking about notation, talking about things that worked and didn't work. Uh, very, very generous uh, a session with the three musicians of the Land's End Ensemble. Uh, very a rich experience for our students. The students then go back to the dra drawing board and take the advice and insight from the, the, from the players of the Lands End Ensemble and rework the piece, change it, rethink it, etc., and then bring that final version back to the ensemble. So that's what you're going to hear today. Uh, and I think hearing live this music that they have worked on now for perhaps seven months is going to be extremely fr fruitful for them. The feedback of a lar live ensemble, a professional live ensemble in a concert situation is the, the, the kickoff for a career, a kickoff for a professional aspiration. So I'd really, really like to thank, on behalf of the music division, the Lands Ensemble and their artistic director, Vincent Ho. Vincent. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. It's been a rewarding journey for all of us involved. Uh, in addition to presenting the four pieces by the students, uh, the musicians had decided to program a work of mine titled Griffin Song following the four pieces, uh, being that three of the students uh, were my students, and to highlight the uh, mentor-student connection that's uh, prevalent in the program. I'll talk a little bit about my piece when, uh, I, uh, later on in the program when they come uh, to perform it. Now, some of you may be wondering why this concert is titled Ekphrasis, and it has much to do with the last work on the program titled A Sybil Andrews Portrait. Ekphrasis, the definition, is the use of vivid language to describe or respond to a work of visual art. This could also apply to music composition as a way to respond to visual art. Back in 2019, my friends Walt and Irene Deboni uh, invited me to meet with the directors of the Glembo Museum. Uh, the Glembo was preparing an exhibition of Sybil Andrews paintings, which they uh, have as part of their permanent collection, and want to explore possibilities surrounding the event. 
After meeting with everyone there and looking through the paintings, I was inspired by many, many ideas. We were <laughs> managed to narrow it down to one concept that we felt very good about, and that is to bring together three of Canada's most esteemed composers to create their own musical response to uh, Sybil Andrews' paintings, hence ekphrasis. The composers we invited were Jocelyn Morlock from Vancouver, Alexina Louis from Toronto, and our very own Alan Gordon Bell. Now to me, these three Juno Award winning composers represent the important cultural pillars to Canada's contemporary music scene. Selecting them, I had no doubt in my mind that they were gonna honor Miss Andrews' works through their music. We had the great pleasure of premiering it in 2019 as well as recording it, and we had planned to present it uh, all together with visual images, but then a little thing called COVID happened, so we had to postpone it. But today, we are so pleased to be able to present it all together with the visual images, much thanks to the support of Glenbow Museum and Walt and Irene Demoni. Let's give them a warm thank you. Now, without much further ado, let's welcome Lanzan Ensemble to the stage and the first composer who will introduce her work, Ms. Liesl Kruger. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Liesl Kruger, a third year composition student here at the University of Calgary. And I'm so excited to share with you about my piece. I chose the title Modes of Eternity to reflect the different ideas and reactions I've seen people have to the concept of the infinite span of time after death. The piece is roughly divided into four sections, each representing one of the three feelings surrounding this idea. The beginning and end of the piece is defined by long held notes in the piano and some shorter melodic fragments in the violin and cello, representing the terrifying realization of how long an eternity really is. The middle two sections of the piece cover a bit more of a positive outlook, representing two different types of life after death. The first is characterized by a very joyous and celebratory theme, starting in the piano and then gradually building in the other two instruments, and is quite self-explanatory in representing the idea of a type of jubilation after death. As this theme fades out, you'll hear a new melody arise in the violin, starting very small, but with each repetition growing gradually until it reaches this magnificent climax. This is all meant to evoke the beauty and splendor of nature and the notion of an afterlife spent in it. I hope you all enjoy this journey through the different modes of eternity.
Hello, my name is John Halverson, and the piece you're about to hear is called Yonder. Uh, for me, the, the word yonder carries with it connotations of going somewhere unfamiliar, someplace new, someplace strange. Uh, with this piece, I wanted to capture what it might sound like to travel through a storm. So the first section is essentially gentle raindrops coalescing into a violent storm. The second section is an uneasy calm in the center of that storm. And the third section is one final trip through to the other side to uh, an unfamiliar and strange place. Thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Peter Stambini. I'm a third year undergrad composition student studying at University of Calgary. Anyways, for my track, or um, for my piece on track, I mean. Uh, the main inspiration for this piece, I wanna say it was mainly derived from my enjoyment of rhythm game music, mainly that of Japanese and Chinese, that I really just started to listen to whenever, or when I was young, and really just helped bring me up to my musical taste to where I am today. And I focused primarily on the heavy sense of flow and uh, just rhythmic energy within these pieces, and I really try to capture and emulate that style of energy within my piece. And within the first, I, I say the piece is split into three different sections, with the first really kind of encapsulating this kind of flowing rhythmic energy that I wanted to encapsulate. And for the second part, I really wanted to give it a bit more of a robust or and a bit more of a mechanical feel to it, where the rhythm is a lot more a lot more force onto the audience, I want to say. It also has a very a neat extended piano technique that I won't spoil, that'll just be heard within the piece. And for the last section of the piece, it's just more of a callback to the main first section of the piece with just everything just going just a lot more crazy, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoy the piece. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. My name is Katie Levinson. I am a classical singer and emerging composer studying for a combined degree in music and art at the University of Calgary. I've studied solo voice under Rachel Hopp for 14 years, and I sing with Mount Royal Cantorai Choir. My piece explores the place where words end and strong emotions begin. The title, Volatile Logic, is an oxymoron. Logic is supposed to be calm and consistent, but feelings can be volatile and chaotic. I use patterns in the music to represent logic, but these patterns get derailed and spiral out of control. The piece struggles to return to logical patterns, but the music volatility feels hectic, unpredictable, anxious, and even infuriating. The piece begins with a short violin solo, which introduces the main musical pattern, a dance-like motif. The cello and piano follow, enhancing the violin. The melody is then passed around, with the pattern returning over and over, becoming more distorted each time. The piece has five sections. Each section goes around and around, adding more cyclical elements until they fit together like matryoshka dolls. The increasingly chaotic elements overtake the musical patterns until the climax, producing the uncomfortable and frustrating feeling 
of having a rug pulled out from under you over and over. I hope you enjoy volatile logic.
As I had mentioned earlier, uh, the musicians had decided to program a work of mine on this program to highlight the um, student mentor connection in the program, and I was de quite delighted for them to select Griffin Song. Griffin Song is, a, is the second movement of my three movement piece, Griffin Realms, uh, that I wrote in 2015, inspired by the Griffin mythology. In Griffin Song, it's, uh, I was trying to depict a portrait of two griffins singing to one another, as represented by the violin and the cello. As the duet unfolds, uh, it gets increasingly intense, all while the piano, uh, the pianist, uh, provides a foundation of increasingly chromatic harmonies. Eventually, this builds to a very intense climax, and after the climax emerges a pseudo-improvisatory uh, moment as performed by the pianist. Now, as the dust settles, you will hear a uh, elegiac uh, chorale that drifts in and out like a distant memory, and thereby concluding the work. I hope you enjoy the piece. Thank you.
A little over a year ago, um, we in the musical community received the news that Jocelyn Morlock had died. It saddened us all a great deal. She was particularly a good friend to Calgary and to this ensemble. In, uh, in 2020, just before the pandemic, she cu curated a concert with Land's End Ensemble in which they featured her marvelous music as well as composers that she had been influenced by and composers that she admired. It was a terrific concert. We enjoyed it immensely. She also came and spoke to our music classes. She talked to my class about uh, her, her piece, My Name is Amanda Todd, the piece that she wrote for the National Arts Center and the piece for which she was given 
the uh, Juno Award for 2018. So we miss her a great deal, and uh, on behalf of the ensemble, and all of you present, we'd like to dedicate this next performance to the legacy and memory of the wonderful music and the wonderful person that is Jocelyn Orlock. She was one of the composers chosen for this project, the Sybil Andrews Project. The Glenbow Museum, uh, with the assistance of Walter and Irene de Boney, commissioned three composers, Jocelyn Morlock, Alexina Louis, and me. We were asked to respond to the artwork of Sybil Andrews, who is, um, whose collection is in the Glenbow Museum, and they were mounting a really significant um, <coughs> exhibition of her work, and so they wanted to include performances of music that were um, either inspired by or that addressed Sybil Andrews' uh, work. Vincent mentioned the word ekphrasis, and it makes a little bit of a, of a stretch when we talk about composers uh, responding to works of art because we don't use words, we use sounds, and so we cannot give you a direct description of the, the artwork. And then as a matter of fact, neither um, or none of the composers did that. Instead, all of us entered into a kind of dialogue with the artwork that was chosen. The first piece you'll hear is by Jocelyn Morlock, and it is called Speedway, and in which she approaches the, you will see the images by the way, she approaches the kind of joyous energy of uh, a group of young people riding motorcycles. It's a fantastic little, little uh, vignette. Alexina Louis approaches a, a completely different sensibility. Hers is uh, out of the night time um, bird song. And it's, it's a very, very delicate piece with exquisite harmonies and some wonderful melodic fragments. And the last one is my piece, which has a title which is far too long. And it is um, basically um, my, my dialogue with the kind of energy that is in Sybil Andrews' work. Not one particular picture, but something about the strokes and the way in which uh, the, that comes across in it. You are going to see projections while the ensemble is performing. So I'd ask you not to s listen to the music as if it were a, a, a score for the pictures. Instead, I'd ask you to listen to the music and look at the, the pictures as if they are in dialogue with each other, as if they were a counterpoint to each other, because that's how they were intended by all the composers. And so um, I know that Jocelyn Morlock had very good ears and so I expect that she may well be listening in. And so Jocelyn, this one's for you.
And now we invite you to the post-concert reception. There's food in the lobby. We'll see you all out there. Thank you so much. <laughs>